Thank God it is Friday, and I'm really, really glad that uh, it has cooled off. Wednesday was 98 degrees Fahrenheit here, two degrees hotter than Austin, Texas. It was 96 degrees in Austin, Texas, uh, but uh, we cooled off the next day, whereas Texas just stays freaking hot. So I was just talking to Dan. I've been thinking about moving down to Texas, but, you know, it's a weather thing. I don't know if I'm going to do uh, <laughs> make that move but i'm looking at it i'm considering it i think there's a much better whiskey community down there but um anyhow i'm gonna do a roll call real quick uh victoria thank you very much for tuning in andrew spurrell thank you very much for tuning in go habs thank you very much for tuning in and i'm sure as people get that hey tim gargis or gargis i don't know how you pronounce that one thank you for uh tuning in uh the oak and smoke so that's probably brent thank you very much for tuning in Tamar, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, and I'll continue saying hello. So uh, for those who don't know, so I went to Texas for a whole week. I was down to working in San Antonio. And hey, Jason, Mash and Drum, thank you very much for tuning in. The Rookie Wine and Whiskey Enthusiast, thank you very much for tuning in. So I spent two weekends in Austin, Texas, visiting wineries and distilleries. And I just started posting my uh, videos uh, on my wine channel from the wines. Uh, that I picked up there. Um, I'm going to spend a, the weekends visiting distilleries, uh, actually in San Antonio and uh, near Austin. And I'm going to do a whole month on Texas whiskeys in January 2020 after I do a whole series on Scotland. Anyway, just before I left, like a day or two before I left for Texas, this box arrived and I didn't open it. And it's from my guest here, Des uh, Dan Trout, also known as Dusty Dan. Uh, so I have no idea what what's in here. Uh, Dan says he doesn't remember 100% what's in here. <laughs> no, so, no. <laughs> so I thought it'd be fun to do. Hey, Robert Licorice, we were just talking about you and your whiskey, uh, your whiskeys, um, particularly about the uh, BBC and the MMC, and wondering if you're going to age some uh, Magic Manicorn in a Sauterne cask. Uh, that would be awesome. So, yeah, it's a sort of a mystery box. So, uh, sommeliers have very particular ways of opening a wine bottle. You know, we have a particular wine, and there's a whole process of opening wine bottles. And when you're doing champagne service, there's a very particular way you do champagne service, you know. Well, there's also a very particular way about opening a box, which is, what a switchblade. <laughs> <laughs> so, the oh, official sommelier way... Of opening, of opening a box with whiskey in it is with a switchblade. Uh, alrighty. So I'm really, really curious. Let's hope, that, Christmas. Let's hope that box is from me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Open it up. There's a bunch of uh, 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 bedroom enhancement products. Oops. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so while I'm getting into this, um, so. Those who are watching, if you don't already, haven't subscribed to uh, Dan's channel, please do. Dan is probably one of the most generous people in the whiskey community, uh, frequently sharing uh, whiskeys, doing uh, blind uh, challenges and so forth, and other people's channels. So it's really good to have uh, Dan on here. And my hope is he didn't – you didn't use those styrofoam peanuts, did you? Um, I don't believe so. I hate those freaking things. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I don't think I put those in there. And the even worse is like the little tiny little ball, like styrofoam balls, because they stick all over everything. And um, <laughs> those I, are the worst. Yeah, and they're all over the place, and you know it's, it's a big mess. So, um, most people know my story. I've been into wine for twenty years. Got into whiskey. Started in April two thousand sixteen as I was studying for the diploma, uh, WSET diploma, one of the units of wine spirits. That's how I got into whiskey. Eventually, a year ago, I separated my channels to start a whiskey channel. So, how did how long have you been into whiskey? And uh, and tell me a little bit how you got it, got it, got it, uh, started your whiskey journey. Um, yeah, I mean, I started. I want to say maybe two, two and a half, in between two to three years now. So it's uh, it's been more recent. Um, but you know, again, I started out. Um, I, I searched for something on YouTube and I saw a video by Horse Looning. Oh, and yeah. uh, I was watching, and I was like, you know, this is this is very interesting how he's picking up all these notes. Yeah. <laughs> on my on my cask, yeah. Um, so, uh, but but uh, you know, it was very uh, informative, and and I, I liked it, and that's kind of really what drew me into um, 
learning more about whiskey and the, the aromas and the flavors behind it. And then I uh, just started watching, you know, uh, Jason from the Mash and Drum and Scott and the Scotch Test Dummies and, and then so on and so on. So that's, you know, that's where my, my journey started. So. So you weren't already into whiskey. You just came across them on YouTube or something or. Yeah, I, I, I was searching for something. And, and uh, I believe it was Jack Daniels, if I'm not mistaken, because I, okay. I remember I had a bottle of it. Um, and I, I saw a, a review of, of his Jack Daniels and how he talked about this glue note that's in this Jack Daniels. And it's like, what, what is he that? talking about? You know, yeah, and, yeah uh, the airplane glue but, note. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, sure enough, you know, I, I found it very informative and it, it was intriguing. So I, you know, I started uh, um, nosing more whiskeys and, and, and tasting more whiskeys. And sure enough, I just learned to, to love it, to be honest with you. So that's the first time I've heard someone get into whiskey because they're watching YouTube. Usually people get into YouTube channels because they've got into whiskey and they wanted to know more than watching. And that's a, you're also the first person I've heard that started off with Horst. Most start with Ralphie. A lot of people start with Ralphie in, you know, back in the early days. Um, yes. so, first of all, so I want to thank you for thus far not, not putting any styrofoam peanuts. And that's peanuts, not peanuts. Uh -huh. It's not a, yeah, I'm not using a styrofoam penis. That would not be good either. So what we have is, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> is there something there? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, here I am. I just got praising you for not using styrofoam peanuts. And here we go. I hate it. Oh, well. Can't complain. But I do like this. Can't go wrong with the, the bubble wrap, man. Got to gotta squeeze the bubble wrap. And... <laughs> This is like Christmas. Now some ni ooh, nicely wrapped uh, bottles of uh, hot sauce. Yes, it's hot sauce. Bottles nice. of hot sauce. Wink, wink, nod, nod. <laughs> All right. So hopefully we can make, keep containment there. What I really don't like with the styrofoam peanuts is, is you have a huge box. And what you're looking for is near the bottom of the box. The and in order to get to it, you're digging through it, and then all the freaking styrofoam's coming out all over the place. Out of the place. That's what I really, really don't like. This is not, this. <laughs> I'm able to maintain some co confinement here of the uh, uh, styrofoam peanuts, but I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I accidentally throw anything away. All right, there, we're good. We're good. Uh, I'm having a hard time remembering how many I sent you. It's either three or four. I, I can't but remember. It looks like there's three in here, and those are each individually wrapped in bubble wrap as well. Okay. Um, so it's, hey, Dustin's in the house, Dustin, DH Silva's in the house. Uh, D Johnny Drum is in the house. I just want to say hello to a few more people popping in. Uh, a few extra names, Trev Wilson. Thank you very much for uh tuning in. At. All right, so uh, as I cut through these, uh, what made you decide to uh actually do a YouTube channel? I think it was peer pressure. Um, from uh, <laughs> from uh, Dan, you should start a channel. Dan, thing. you should start a channel. Dan, you should start a channel. Dan, you yeah. should start a channel. Yeah. Dan, you should start a channel. It's like, yeah, I tell you, it was uh, it, it was a uh, you know, I had thought about it for a while, and then um, I think after I got back from Kentucky, uh, after Jason and Scott kind of um, really talked me into it, I think that's when uh, I, you know, I, I had decided to go ahead and make a channel, and um, but no, I mean, I've always wanted to have one, and I have. You know plenty of whiskeys to review on the channel too so um but yeah i mean that's that's what you know i think it was more more peer pressure than anything i was secretly wanted to but it was the, the peer pressure that drove me to do it so well even even if so i mean we were talking about before i went live you know like my, 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 my recent series i'm spending nine hours at least per video which is a little nuts it's almost like a you know like i've got a part-time job doing it um even if you're not going to go that nuts so and spend that much time on it and put, put that much work in, into it just to have a channel and be interactive and part of the community and getting your foot into it so that you're not just a viewer. You're also, yeah, you know, whether you're coming on to guest or someone else or someone's coming to the guest on to at least have a platform for yourself to have, to have some engagement. That's really, Absolutely. really, really cool. And then you also contribute to the community as well. Uh, not in terms of your knowledge experience, but also in terms of sharing bottles, uh, that's what they were really cool as well. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. So, what are you drinking right now? I'm drinking um, something. It's uh, the Pursuit series. It's from the guys of Bourbon Pursuit. Um, they have their um, right now. I believe they have their own stuff uh, in the works. But uh, this, a lot of this, is believed to be um, some George Dickel 
um, whiskey. So, um, so they, Bourbon uh, Pursuit is a channel, and they also have their own bottling. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, I okay. believe I believe they actually have their own stuff in production right now. But uh, this is um, the earlier episodes they have is all um, believed to be uh, George Dickel. So, I just want to say to Tamar, Tamar, you're not just a viewer, dude. You're one of my favorites, and the only reason why I've had uh, a Lark whiskey from Australia, from Tasmania, Australia, is because of that dude. So uh, everybody loves Tamar. So thank you very much. Um, and yeah, I've seen him a lot of chat well. rooms. So, but there are, there are also a lot of core viewers who had no desire to get in front of camera. I've invited some on. They're like, no, 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 I don't want to get in front of camera. You know, you think like Richie Z who doesn't live too yeah. far from here um, and other people, you know, part of the, So I really enjoy them, enjoy interacting with them. Um, and they don't, so not everybody is called or gifted or to have the desire in front of camera that they, they just want to be engaged that way. And they'll show up at, a, you know, whiskey advances like that. So that's cool too. Um, so not 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 everybody should necessarily should want to get in front of the camera and be a ham and all this kind of stuff. It's been all I mean, the money and everything uh, out there today. Like so. DH, DH Silva's in a lot of chats too. I mean, you see oh, yeah. everybody's total chat. Reg- so. Yeah, total, total regular. So uh, let's see what's I'm, I, I can't see through here very well. So I'm going to cut into this one, see what I got here. It's just like it's a whiskey Chris, summertime Christmas. I, I'm pretty sure I, I now I remember two that I sent you. I don't remember the third one was. So is that that bottle you have there? Is that one that they actually distribute or sell, or is that one there's it's sort of an in-house thing? Um, no, this is actually this one's sold out now. This is one of the earlier, well, not earlier episodes. But this is episode seven. Um, this one is 14 years old and uh, is 110 proof. So is that one they're legally selling? I mean, there's like. They bought stuff, or yes, yeah. I think you you were able to find these on uh, seal box, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I think they're like I said. I think that episode is sold out now, unless it's sold somewhere else. That was the only place I could find it. So the first one I got here is Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, one thirty six proof. So is this a particular cask? What's so like, uh, I know that's actually, seven. That's one of the old uh, the old bottlings of the Elijah Craig. So what do you mean by old bottling? Like not, not the actual like not the new bottling style. I believe they're from two thousand I think that one's from two thousand fifteen, maybe, two thousand sixteen, if okay. I'm not mistaken. So, and so it's one thirty six proof, which an ABV is I gotta make do my freaking math. Uh, Sixty two sixty five. So yeah, sixty eight. <laughs> Okay, hold on. on. Watch, hold on. Hey Siri, what's one thirty six divided by two? It's sixty eight. Okay, sixty eight proof. (laughs) uh, No, the thing is, I we've gotten so accustomed to be dependent on technology. My brain doesn't. Why do I have to? I don't have to do math. I just ask Siri. You know. (laughs) I'll, 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 I'll grab the bottle really quick. One sec. Okay. Cool. Uh, hey, the whiskey friend, Alan. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in. I'm doing an unboxing here uh, of uh, samples that uh, Dan Trout sent me, and I'm using a different. I'm yes. usually I have a separate camera. There you go. So that's the bottle of it. Yes. Okay. Cool. So it's an older Elijah Craig. So I'm using yeah. I'm using it I'm using my laptop camera rather than the other camera. So if I move the earthquake, ah! So if I rock the table a little bit, then the camera's gonna move. So it'll look like an, I'm having an earthquake here. And Gary K, thank you much. And Thomas Buck, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. See, not it's not the one problem with doing an unboxing. Now I gotta fight with the okay. tape. There we go. So w- w- we should do this again sometime. Except next time, send them to me blind. Do a blind taste. Okay. I've never had anybody test. I'm kind of surprised. I hadn't had anybody test me blind. <clears throat> <laughs> I said. I remember. I think two of these were ones that you had won off of one of the uh, someone else's live streams for answering the questions right. And then the third one I threw in there for something for you to try. Now I'm kind of curious. I, I don't remember what the live stream was. Um, was it Rob Whiskey in the Six? No, I want to say maybe it was Jason from the Master. Oh, Jason Master. Okay, okay. Yeah. 
So I'm going to pour a little bit of all three of these, and then I'll go through them. That gives them a little bit of time to open up. Um, yeah, the whiskey friend said he has that bottle of uh, Elijah Craig, and it's it's awesome. So uh, tell me a little bit about more about the whiskey you're trying. I, it's, so it's it's a bourbon, yes? Uh, it it, uh, it is. It's a, it's a straight bourbon whiskey. Do you know what the um, you know what the mash bill is on it? That I do not. I don't think they disclose the mash bill, even though it's it's Dickel. Um, so I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure of the of the mash bill. So I did a whole month uh, bourbon month this last year. I've been to Kentucky. Been to six distilleries. Um, I probably consume a lot more bourbon um, off camera. Um, then I do on camera. Usually I'm in the mood for something a little sweet, something high ABV that I can throw on ice. Um, something when I want that sort of, sort of like a, a vanilla ice cream with caramel on it and with cinnamon. I kind of get that from some bourbons when you really, really get them nice and cold. Sort of like a melted uh, French vanilla ice cream with cinnamon yeah, and yeah. With caramel on it, you know, that kind of, and maybe a little bit of peanut butter, some of them, a little bit of peanut butter thrown in there. But in terms of all the producers and the bottlings and all that kind of stuff, I don't have the knowledge because um, I put in the time as, say, maybe perhaps yourself or um, Jason over at uh, the Mash and Drum. So I, I kind of, in terms of nerdiness, I'm probably more of a, a, the, the Scotch nerd. Uh, whereas Jason is probably a little more of the of the bourbon nerd, so I don't know them as well. So this second one, oh, Russell's Reserve, nice. Um, yeah, that's a good Russell's Reserve. Russell's Reserve Beetle. I, I don't know. I'm showing you. It's, it's the Beetlejuice Beetle pick. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, your handwriting is a lot better than uh, Matt over the Whiskey Crusaders. His is uh, <laughs> practically is totally illegible. He's he's a very generous person with his whiskeys, but his handwriting yes. sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that is, uh, yeah, that's the Beetlejuice pick. It's a uh, it's a very very tasty pick from um, uh, from the ND Degenerates is who who picked that. So that's the group who picked that pick. So what's this? So I've only had Russell's Reserve. I've had it at the distillery, and then there's a local restaurant here called Quality Bourbons and Barbecue. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, a, co a friend of mine, a colleague, he was moving back east. He uh, he's here this week, but he, you know, he's going back and forth. You know, he moved back east, so I took him out for dinner. We had dinner, and then you know, we had dessert afterwards, and I had a bar, and so I had a Russell's Reserve. But I'm not super familiar with the whole lineup of the Russell's Reserve. Um, so, what is sort of like, particularly that you know of, that's different about this one from the other Russell Reserves? I think, I mean, as far as the single barrels go, I mean, they're all gonna, they're all gonna have their their variances in them, but this one offers some. Uh, some darker fruits to it, um, maybe a little bit of uh, extra black pepper in the in the finish. Um, it's it's definitely a very unique Russell single barrel. It's really unlike anyone that I've ever tried that that I've had. And I have a, a good handful of Russell Reserve um, single barrels, but you'll you'll taste it. You know who was a big fan of this one was um, uh, Scott from. Um, Scotch test dummies. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. He was a he was a big fan of it. I sent it to him in a blind sample, and he uh, he really liked that. One, so, so just on the aromas, I mean, I wish you could somehow get the aromas through the microphone or something like that. I have, I mean, I haven't put it up to my nose just from this distance and just from pouring it in there. I could already tell there's a huge difference between these two. Just very unique aroma oh, yeah. between these two. That, that are very, very distinct. Now, I know in terms of the breadth of aromas and flavors, I'm trying to keep myself on camera. Scotch is probably like this uh, because of all the different cash, sherry, cash, whatever, bourbon, cash, whatever else, uh, as well as you got peated and everything else. A bourbon is a little bit uh, narrower, but there still are a lot of uh, distinctiveness. The difficult, the challenges, I think, for wh for whiskey tubers is how do you describe them without saying Sound, I'm just keep popping these, and, and without it sounding like you're saying the same thing all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's um. I mean, really, I mean, one of the things that I resorted to in the past was um the flavor wheel. I mean, if if you really have a flavor wheel in front of you and you're and you're sitting here and you're you know you're tasting some of your whiskeys, 
um, something pops in your head. I mean, you kind of look at the wheel and, and see, you know, where it falls on the on the on the flavor wheel and all that. So I mean, sometimes I'll I'll you know go off of the, the flavor wheel just to see what else I may, I may be picking up. You know, hey, you want to say I mean, a lot of this time, but what I'm tasting, I may not be able to think of it. But then all of a sudden, I look at the flavor wheel and I'm like, hey, you know what? I, that's right. what I'm getting. So yeah, so the challenge is particularly people you know new to wines or new to whiskeys is you got this aroma or flavor and you're like, what the heck is that? Yeah. So if you can see your flavor wheel, go, oh, it's like that. that yeah. Because it's because we're not in the habit of going around constantly identifying things. So one way to sort of improve your ability to analyze things is constantly, even when you're not doing wines or whiskeys, constantly analyze things. So um, so like a, a, in the workplace, uh, they have like a you know a cafeteria and people in the some people in the morning would go get their breakfast and bring it into their, their office or their cubicle. And so I would walk by their officer cubicle and just on aromas, I would tell them what they're eating. What it was. Yeah. yeah and, and, so they get a burrito and I would analyze the components of their, their omelet. And I would say, I'm getting this, this, and this, and this, and this. And they're looking at me like, wow, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a matter of practice of getting get, yeah. constantly identifying aromas, whether you like them or not, just so that you're constantly, even if you never smell those in a wine or a whiskey, it's just that in being in the habit to quickly identify things. Identify. Um, yep, I, I agree. Completely agree. The, although there's two areas I need to spend more time on flowers and individual, some of the unique spices. Those uh, floral notes are hard to pick up, man. And I mean, and I know Master Sommeliers who say they just kind of go, it's a it's a purple wine. Uh, I'm getting violets. <laughs> they, they, there's a floral <laughs> note in there. Okay, how many purple flowers? You got violets. You got, um, um, I know there's another one. Um, the tulips come in purple too, don't they? Yeah. Tulips, possibly. Uh, yeah. What's the other one? Um, anyway, so you just, you just, you just say, you got, you got a four and then just name some purple. So this next one is, uh, and I'm not pouring these all out tonight. Jim Beam, 1976. Wow. Yeah. 1976. Yeah, that one was from one of the, uh, the Cantors. 1976, 86 proof, 100 months. Oh, so that's the aging on it? Yes. 100 months? Okay, wow. So what year were you born? I was born in 1982. <laughs> so 1976, I was in the fourth grade. <laughs> oh, wow. That's great. That's wow. <laughs> wow, I'm an old fart. Yeah, <laughs> gonna, I, need to do a, uh, I need to do a live stream with Quig, Food Quig. We're good. It's gonna be the grumpy old man because he he and I are like one or two years apart. And our birthdays are real close. All right, so th we have three bourbons. So what would you recommend? Okay, so it was eighty six proof, which is lower than Elijah Craig. Uh, I think it's lower. Than, uh, it's lower than both of them. The, the Russells is one hundred and ten proof. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah, because yeah, you didn't write that one on there. So um, I think I should start with uh, the Jim Beam, or not? Yeah, yeah. I'll um I'll pour some out too. I have uh. I have my mason jar full of it right now. So, so uh, Brent uh, Oak and Smoke says, uh, Eric, the beard looks nice. I now go back and watch my other videos without the beard. Uh, I'm like, I look a lot younger without the beard, but it's become a look now. And so, even if I get tired of it, um, Alan says in 1976, he was 12. So, I was uh, 10 years old. I was 10 years old. So, I was born in 66. So, I mean, we're not blind. We're not blind tasting. So whenever you're blind tasting, um, whether it's wine or whiskeys, do the visual first and smell them first before tasting them all. Because once you get something in your palate that's in there, and just on the nose. So if I was doing these blind, I would want to see which one is potentially less ABV by going by the intensity and whatever little tingle you might get on the nose. I might figure that one. The actually the mildest nose, the least intense. The Russells. Yeah, yeah, is actually the Russell. Yeah. Is actually the yeah. Russells. The freshest, in terms of a freshness to it, is actually Indeed. the beam. Yeah, it's funny. You know exactly what I'm gonna say. Yeah, this is uh, this one came from a, a decanter, and it was uh. It came out. I mean, it was completely full. 
um, sealed. The court was in perfect shape. I mean, I was, I was kind of surprised, to be honest with you, because sometimes you get corks in those old decanters and they're falling apart. You know, right. half of it will come out, half of it stays right in the bottle. Right. So. So it was. It was not in the. It was not in the the bottle from the distillery, or was it a decanter from the distillery? Um, the decanter. I mean, originally was from. I guess when they when they were producing them. Um, but uh, when I uh, when I buy them, I go through a, a group of guys who are who are big into collecting older whiskeys like this, and uh, so I, I get it. I get it straight from them. So I, as far as I know, I don't know of any other. So the Scotch Four Dummies just did a thing on a collection of old scotches, which it was a really, really good video. And I would like to go to their house because they did a they did they got a collection of really old scotches and then they did the newer versions of those same scotches and the side by side. Really great, great video. You guys check it out if, if you haven't seen that one. That's like an awesome rare education. In terms of to be able to go back 40 years, some of them are 40 years old versus a not um, you know, 40 year old JB. Versus a modern JB, um, yeah. The same thing with bourbon. So to take take one, of these, take an old Jim Beam like this, and then take a newer Jim Beam, you know, try to get as close as you can in terms of proof and all that, and then go side by side with it. Yeah, there's been. I mean, I've have I have a couple of bottles that are uh, that are similar. You know, for uh, whether it's a Jim Beam and a, and a modern Jim Beam, and you can you can definitely taste the differences between the two. Same proof. Uh, same, well, roughly around the same age, um, but there's definitely uh, some differences from the old style bourbons as uh, as opposed to the the newer bourbons. So this one, in terms of and just I'm starting, it seems livelier, freshier, a little bit more pronounced. It really pops up out of the glass. Um, lighter, lighter corn notes. Where is it? Whereas. I guess I'm gonna turn the labels around so I can keep track of what I'm. Whereas the uh, Russells, it's a darker, more cooked corn, um, heavier uh, oak note, a uh, more charred oak note, uh, but a more of a, a darker cooked corn. And my nose clear for a second. Whereas the, and the Elijah, the Elijah Deep smells dark. like an Elijah actually smells like a classic Elijah. Yeah. It's not that radically different than I would say from a uh, other Elijah Craig's I've had. Yeah, a lot of the times, I mean, on the on those, I mean, I would say that one. And if I were to compare that to one of the modern Elijah Craig's, as far as the nose, I would say the the B five one eight would be the one that I would say that's very similar to on the nose. So Donner Pass, who's also he lives in the uh, Sierra foothills of California. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in, Alan. Uh, who's over in Manchester, England. Thank you much for tuning in. Uh, have a, a good, great night and have a good weekend. So there's actually a slight uh, floral note, yellow flowers. But there's a, a candied note, like a sugar. Uh, it's very easy to drink, too. It really yeah, is. Sugar cookie note, and I'm just working on the nose. Yeah, there is a corn note there. It's more of a, a sweet. Um, cream corn, and then of course classic cinnamon, nutmeg, vanilla. But there's nothing, any one particular component that is sort of overriding everything else. Overpowering, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very balanced for sure. And the other two seem darker, woodier, more charred, more more cooked corn. All right, let's go on the palate. Of course, one of us is supposed to be talking while the other one's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't get dead air. Yeah. So Scott and Bart. So when Scott's talking, Bart will be drinking. And when Bart's drinking, Scott will be talking. <laughs> so it's just, of course, this, I'm going to pour a little bit more in there. Um, just So just an initial sip. Um, I don't want to. Well, let me take another one real quick. Yeah. I mean, again, Comparing the, this, you know, to a to a modern day uh, Jim Beam, you definitely get those slight differences, but it's just there's that. It's hard to describe like, that older bourbon uh, taste that that comes off on the palate. I guess once you once you sip uh, a couple of them from time to time, you kind of kind of pick those 
those notes and aromas up, you know, from those older bourbons. Sometimes they come off as butterscotch notes and you know, right. so forth. So I've been to Jim. Have you been to? I'm sure I'm asking you a stupid question. You've been to Kentucky, yes? Yes. Okay. So, and I've been to Jim Beam Distillery. Okay. Really, really cool tour. So it's kind of funny. Some whiskeys can feel heavy, mouth coating, very viscous. Kind of whatever. Yeah. This one, it almost like kind of hovers above my palate. I mean, there's, yeah. I'm getting it's more so in the upper part, and it feels lighter and thinner. Um, and, and I'm not going to use the word smooth. It's really silky, velvety. It just really uh, just glides across your palate. So, and so I think one of the things, okay, we're doing three bourbons. How, what are going to be the big differences? And is talk about the texture and structure of it. So yeah, are, you I mean, tasting, this, are you tasting this now as well? I am. Okay, so what are you getting? I mean, I get, actually, like, how you had mentioned there's that corn on the nose. I get the corn on the palate. Mm -hmm. um, on the front of the palate, I pick up the corn. I get the cinnamon. Um, you get the vanillas and the caramels. Um, but there is a little bit of, and it's it's a, it's very, very faint, just the lightest dried leather note on the back mm -hmm. of the palate as it goes down to the finish. It's Particularly, I was going to say, very, definitely on the finish. Definitely on the yeah, finish. It's, it's very odd. But like you said, it doesn't, it's not, um, it's it goes down like you said smooth you know you don't want to use that word but it really does it's very easy to drink and yeah and i and i know so the the proof is lower you know because it's uh what would you say this one eight to six proof but i'm not getting a big heat here it's very yeah. light it, and it sort of almost evaporates off the you've got it on your palate but it's sort of before you swallow it's almost like you're you're already absorbing it's already sort of a well, light yeah yeah an airy it's very airy um it, it, so that's what I, uh, I don't know if you can have people honking horns outside. It's almost like it gives it a little bit more elegance, a little bit more finesse, um, and really super uh, approachable. Now, I wish I could do time travel, go back. Okay, what was it like when it was first released? Right. As opposed Has, to now. Yeah. Is there any bottle variation at all? Of course, you weren't born yet, so you wouldn't, so you, let alone be drinking, so you wouldn't know. But it's really, really <laughs> uh, different. Now I have had um, uh, I, I have uh, several decanters, and I do have two um, Jim Beams. Um, they're two years apart, three years apart, um, and uh, the differences in taste are are they're slightly different. I would say it's more on the mouthfeel, though. The flavors are kind of mm -hmm. consistent, right. but it's the it's it's a little the the one that's older is a little more viscous than um, than this one is here. Okay, so they are very consistent. So how do you do, so turn, we talk a little bit about whiskey hunting. Um, so I, there are certain shops around here um, that don't put their inventory um, on their website because it's laborious to constantly be typing in whatever's in there. Um, so I like to go in there and hunt, particularly if there's something new coming out and there's a couple of them that potentially might get them before anybody else does. So I'll go check them out. Um, the problem is, um uh, mm -hmm. captain 3d who lives in the bay area they do videos oh. of all these whiskey shops and so they're revealing all my secrets oh he's uh, doing a video yeah. of that whiskey shop that's the one i like to uh, i like to go and check out now <laughs> tell everybody about that place <laughs> but um so how do you so but acquiring older wine acquiring older whiskeys it's not like i mean you might find them on a bottom shelf tucked in the back somewhere at a local whiskey shop or something like that. But typically how are you getting your bottles? Um, I mean, you can find some at estate sales. Um, I think you'd be surprised at what you would find at an estate sale. But uh, I go through again, a, a core group of guys that, um, uh, that are, you know, through the secondary market and then, you know, outside the secondary market that I became friends with. Um, who again are into collecting those older, those vintage uh, bourbons, and uh, so I, I just I usually go through them. You know, there's not all of the secondary market is shut down on Facebook. You just got to know who to ask and, and where to look. It's right. you know because a lot of them have to keep they have to be private. Um, right. You're not allowed to, to post for you know for sale stuff and, and you know whatnot on on Facebook. But right, that's, so that's. Oh, I got it. Oh, I have two chats open and I can't click on the 
YouTube one. Uh, so Loch Ness asks, uh, do you think batch variations vary more? I'm not the guy to ask in terms of older bottles. With older whiskeys, the longer they're in the barrel, the more influence and variations there may be. So, so you're talking about, say, like a 15-year-old this or a 20-year-old that. There'd be more of a batch variation between 20-year-old barrels. Um, I would not. I would not have enough personal experience to say, yeah, that that I've actually come across that. It potentially it's there. I could see why they would, um, because individual barrels have a life of their own, uh, and where they were, you know, if you're something sitting in a in a warehouse or a rec house for 15, 20 years, whatever, in a different place, unless they're moving it around, it's definitely gonna, you know, go different directions than something of the same uh, vintage and so forth. Um, but um, in terms of personal experience, I've done. And what about you? You run across anything? I mean, as far as older bourbons, no. But I, I can tell you when when we were in Kentucky and um, uh, when Jason and Scott were interviewing uh, Caleb Kilburn from Peerless, um, he had two he had two of his single barrels that he had, and they were sister barrels, and one of them had really nice rum characteristics to it. Um, some nice brown sugars and, and cinnamon. Um, and the other one was called like orange blossom or something where it was very botanical. Um, a lot of nice like citrus characters to it. Um, so, I, I mean, personally, I, I would say uh, different barrels for older bourbons. It, it's it's hard to say, but but younger, yes, with, without a doubt. So I'm going to move on to the Russells. The Russells. Wow, what a difference in nose! Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pour me. This is a uh, the barrel rye single barrel. Um, this one is 14 years old and it's 145.2 proof. Okay, so that shop, uh, that restaurant I mentioned earlier, uh, Quality Bourbons and, and Barbecue, they have about five or six different bottles of that. So I might go there just to you know um, try some of that, but I've not had one of their bottles. No, yeah, this one's uh, it's hot again. It's above hazmat. It's 145 proof, um, but it doesn't really drink that hot. Um, really nice, really nice flavor characteristics to this one, though. What are you getting on the nose for the Russells? So, yeah, as I mentioned before, it's a it's a sort of a deeper mm -hmm. cooked corn note, more of a a, a darker caramel. A little bit more woody, not. I mean, not like major, not like some old Van Papier, uh, Van Makler or whatever. But um, maybe a little bit of peanut butter. But everything just yeah, seems, one, so everything seems dark, dark, darker and, and and deeper. Yeah, this one, like I said, it's unlike any single barrel I've ever had from Russell's. You know, I mean, you'll you'll get some variations uh, every now and again that really maybe have. Um, one flavor that's more more prominent than, than another but this one it's kind of off the charts a little bit but as far as the uh the flavors when you taste it so and just i mean just a faintest i'm just getting a little bit of a cherry yeah. note just a faint uh, but not as much as i say like a makers or something like that you know the weird thing now having a, a beard is you put that up to your, <laughs> your, your, your whiskers or whatever bumping up against the glass it's kind of weird all right, on the pot. Wow. Holy cow. Isn't it different? Wow. So it's a little hot. <laughs> Definitely has some tingling going on there. If yeah. I were to guess, if I were to guess, it probably has a slightly higher rye content in the mash, you think? And, and that that is a good point. I mean, that could be where I'm getting some of that black pepper from. You know what I mean? Because I, I definitely get some black pepper on that. So, yeah. So, like in the mid to the back, I get just a little bit of black licorice a, or a anise. Um, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Definitely a lot more of the the, the pepper. A lot more. Of the, a lot more intense spice on it. And there's a slight. I'm gonna take another sip. Hmm. So spice and alcohol, 
the spice character can sort of exaggerate your perception of the alcohol. So I don't think it's like really hot per se, but it definitely, the uh, spice is definitely accentuated from the alcohol. And I get almost, so there's root beer, like you, you know, there's root beer, like your Fanta and your mug root beer and your A&W root beer. And then if you ever get root beer from a health food store, that's like real authentic, organic root beer. It doesn't yeah. taste anything that comes out of the fountain, you know, a Taco Bell or anything like that. It's very, very, there's a slight sort of an organic health food store. If you ever go to a health food store, um, tr try health food, try organic cream sodas, uh, um, uh, ginger beers, and, um, and root beers. You get much more of as if you made some homemade root beer using actual roots of something. Um, so I kind of get a little bit of that as well in the mid palate, which kind of goes along yeah. with all the spice. Yeah, it's, I mean, honestly, it's, it's a Russell's like, a, I mean, I wish I had another bottle of it because I, I think I have maybe an ounce of that left. Um, but it, it was a, it's a great pick. I mean, they did a great job on that one. Just so, so unique and different. So when was this released that, you know, do you know? I, I don't know the year like when that was released. I, I want to say 2017. Okay. I'm so, not mistaken. And this is from Warehouse D. And you know me, I always prefer the D. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to happen on here. <laughs> so, yeah, wow, really, really different. So this one, so the, the, the 1976 Jim Beam, it's lighter. It's more elegant, probably yeah. a little more approachable. I say refreshing, if, if anything, kind of. Yeah, yeah, it is. it has that yeah. sort of light, refreshing character, yeah. light, refreshing character, a little bit more floral to it. This is a little deeper, a little darker, definitely a little spicier, a little bit more of that. And I, as I'm talking right now, I'm still getting the spice. Uh, the I, I like black. I know some people don't like black licorice, so they not they tend not to like uh, rye or high rye bourbons. But it definitely lingers in there, and I really, really. And sometimes I'm just in the mood. One of my favorites, uh, if I could find it, is the Redemption nine nine year old rye. Okay, does that have a lot of uh? Does that have a lot of? Oh, yeah, it's a, it, which is a high rye bourbon. It's it, it's uh, it's up here somewhere. Oh yeah, there it is. It's back there. anyway. Um, you can't see anything because not we have the narrow camera on. Um, but sometimes I'm just in the. mood. It's kind of like sometimes I'm in the mood for a real peaty whiskey, you know, peated Scotch. Something that real earthy, particularly when it's really cold. And sometimes I'm just really, really in the mood for a kick of spice and those licorice notes. And so I'll, I'll lean towards that one. But this is so are, really, you, are you a fan of like Sambuca? Are you a fan of Sambuca at all? Uh, they opened up for Jethro Toll back in the 70s or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. What the hell is Sambuca? I think it's a, it's a liquor, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. It's like black licorice like yeah i've heard of it oh yeah, yeah 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 so there's a lot of anise like ouzo is made from so there's a lot of anise liqueurs um particularly out of the mediterranean yeah but ouzo from that is it has just the slightest bit back there on the finish it's very very different it's very different from any russells that i've ever had so I don't have enough. I've only had you know Russell's Reserve like a couple of times, so I don't have enough experience to compare with. So, um, in terms of bourbons, do you venture outside of the bourbon? Can I know bourbons are more affordable. It's more American. Bourbon has its own little sub community within the whiskey larger whiskey community. Um, so, but do you do venture out outside of bourbons very often, or this is pretty much you think your 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 forte? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I really like bourbon. I mean, I, I don't think, um, uh, you know, I would steer too far away from it. But I, I do like some scotches. I have um, been sent scotches from um, uh, uh, Keith over at the Malted uh, Man Cave. Um, yeah. He sent me um, some that I actually really enjoyed. Uh, one of them was a Springbank. Um, okay. Uh, God, I can't remember the name of all of them. But yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's definitely some scotches that I like, and then. With those tes uh, Texas whiskeys that Matt from the Whiskey Crusaders sent, mm -hmm. um, some of them were were like single malts, which I guess it, it almost tasted like it was a it was a Scotch, um, and, and I enjoyed those. Yeah, as well. Single malt is a Scotch. Single malt just yeah. means it came from one distillery rather than blending from different distilleries. Gotcha. Um, but they, they almost reminded me of 
of what a scotch tastes like. Um, some of them anyway, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I like, I like scotches too. I'm not, I'm not against any, any scotch to be honest, besides monkey shoulder, I think is what I don't, oh, really? I don't, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Monkey soldiers is, is a, a, a blended scotch, um, okay. sort of good entry level. I, I, I tried to, I did a, a review of a monkey shoulder when I first got into whiskeys. I don't have a memory of it. You know, I need to go back and, and, uh, uh, and try it again just to refresh my memory. But it's w actually one of the most popular uh, whiskeys among the uh, the whiskey tribe. It's not among whiskey, whiskey consumers as a whole, just that particular group for some strange reason. I um I have a, a Glen Levitt 15, I believe. That mm -hmm. uh, I, actually I, I enjoy that one to be honest with you. That's a, that's a pretty nice scotch for me anyway. You know, who's who's very I'm I'm a, I'm a beginner when it comes to scotch. So probably one of the challenges, particularly with Americans, is. The quality price ratio for fifty dollars and under, it's hard to beat bourbon, you know. And so, if you're on if you're on a budget or you don't want to spend it, you know, it's if you're going one hundred and fifty dollars for a scotch, you go, wow, I could get like three bottles of such and such uh, for yeah. that price, and that'd be a killer yeah. bourbon. I think you could see why people would oh. lean so heavily, particularly in the United States. And then if you got you know, like Bobby and Sam, they live in Kentucky. Uh, Chad and Sarah, who just got married. I know they're not watching because they're sure they're on the honeymoon somewhere. Uh, just got married, uh, this, I think, just a couple of days ago. Uh, yeah. You know, you can see if that's what's in your backyard, you know, that's what you're, you're going to be doing. When I was in Scotland, and I, so I stayed at a hotel, and I'd go to a restaurant or a bar or whatever at, at night, and I'd just sort of scan what's on the shelf. They have Maker's Mark. Maybe a wild turkey or something like that. But I mean the, the bourbons are just like just not there. So yeah, if you were yeah. Scotland, you wouldn't be you wouldn't have a bourbon review channel. <laughs> not yeah. existent. It would it would be just a little bit nuts. So but and yet you would have just uh an an enormous supply of scotch whiskeys that no one's ever heard of, never had, which I'm kind of yeah. surprised. There's only a couple whiskey tubers in scotland aquavite mm -hmm. and then alan who was just here but he's from scotland but he lives in england there you would think living in scotland there would just be like whiskey tubers oh and then of course ralphie yeah i forget ralphie he's the, yeah i was gonna say i was gonna say yeah he'd be the last one and I can go you would think there would be a ton of scotch reviewers there but there aren't hey cato thank you very much for uh tuning in so do you have a i know so, Elijah, okay, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, put that one aside. Do you have a favorite bourbon or go-to go bourbon that you think you like a, a, a lot? Go-tos. Um, I mean, the Elijah Craig Small Batch is a great go-to bourbon. Um, uh, I mean. So, I, I, so the, I put aside Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, so then you go to Elijah Craig Small Batch. Okay. <laughs> Got to keep it in the family, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I like uh, the Russell's Reserve single barrels. I mean, just the you know the, the different profiles that you get from some of these. I mean, again, you get some of those consistencies, yeah, you know, throughout. Um, but but then some of them have that unique twist to them, like the the Beetlejuice pick that I sent you. You know, it's um with with the Russell's, I, I don't think you can go wrong, in my opinion. So Steve A just says uh, he mentions whiskey geek, no nonsense. So no nonsense, no nonsense whiskey. Uh, that's Vin. He's in the UK and Jason Whiskey Wise. Uh, he's just he still has his channel there, but he's still busy working. He's now working in the industry. Uh, Jason's actually near London. So those guys are both in England. Whiskey Geek, I subscribe to him, but I can't remember where he's located, uh, which I feel bad because I should know that. Uh, but he's got a really good channel, does some really good stuff. He, I can't remember where he's at. Anyway. So so did, you like that Russell? Did, you? did you like the Russells? Yeah, I really, really like that a lot. Uh, yeah. But I think if I were to spend more time in bourbons, I would probably start to lean more and more towards the heavier rye mass. I just yeah. like that particular character to it. Yeah. I'm now gonna, we're going uh, to uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof uh, Old Bottle. So Yeah, I'm going to drink hold this it up one to the with camera again. Hold yeah. it up to the camera again. So the bottle changed. I'll grab a new one. Uh, hold on, hold, keep it there. I'm a, I'm just doing no comparison. Uh, so hope okay. And then here's mine. 
So you can see now you people can see the difference between an older bottle and a newer bottle. They got the barrel image of the barrel in the middle there. The label is changed. They do more of a, I don't know, sort of a screening thing on there. We can see more straight through it versus a darker one. Anyways, you can see the differences between the bottles, between an old one and a new one. There's a lot of, um, uh, I don't have the whole set um, of the old style. Um, I think there's 10. 10 or 10 or 11 of them, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but they all range in proof. And again, you're talking about such different flavors on some of these. You know, you have the the hazmat one, which is I think 140.2 proof, the 139.8 proof. Um, all just, just really good. This would this one, in my opinion, is is fantastic. This one is really, really good. So Elijah Craig, they come out what three times? Elijah Craig Burbo, they come out three times a year. Yes, and the A batch, B batch, and C batch. So if you can jump on them when they first hit the shelves, you can get them at a decent price, fifty to seventy bucks. If you're waiting, a, if you see them a year later, they're still on the shelf. I've seen them here for one hundred fifty bucks for the older bottles. Ooh. Yeah, that's that's freaking wow. Cool. That's 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 up there. Well, they, they become harder to find, so then they start increasing the prices on them. Mm -hmm. So this one, do you remember where you got this one from? This bottle from? I got this from uh, one of the, the groups of guys that I that I talk to a lot. Okay, so you think you get a lot more bottles out of uh, out of the whiskey networking from people? Yes. So they're yeah, acquiring I mean, them, and then you're getting from them, or? Correct. Yeah, they're um, they're pretty big collectors. So okay. Um, oh, okay. They, yeah, I mean they make stuff that that I have, but it's nothing. So right, right. They have, yeah, they have crazy things, man. I mean. Some of, the best, really some of the best wines I've had, most insane, expensive wines I've ever had, and the best wines I've had, been the same sort of thing. G guys, I yeah, know. I mean, these, guys are, these guys are buying those uh, those new Eagle Rares, the double Eagle Rare, oh, or whatever it is, for like $11,000 and stuff like that. Like, Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. No, no, thanks. So in terms of on the nose, you know, I'm going to uh, get another glass. I'm going to pour myself. Um, I'm going to pour put some water in one. No, no, I'm going to pour myself a little of this one. I'm going to do a side by side in comparison between the two. Which um, which batch was it that you have? So this is a C nine one seven. Okay. If I recall correctly, it was the one that Scott and Bart initially called the Wow bottle of Wow. But just to sort of do a side by side comparison between the two. <clears throat> Because I think if you get your whiskers in the whiskey, you still smell the whiskey even though, when your nose isn't up to the glass. Just go. Tom, uh, Tom Moore I, said. Uh, Tom, I, go, Tom I, I, said smell, I can smell bourbon going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Tom Moore said he uh, he can get the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof at uh, forty five to sixty five a bottle at uh, the two stores that he goes to frequently. Cool. I know he goes. Yeah, forty five to forty five. So, do you have the C nine one seven? Um, I do not have the C one nine seven. I did. It is. Uh, it is gone. I think I lost him. Now I'm hoping I huh? didn't lose everybody else. I'm. You can't. I'm still here. Oh shit! Hold on. Shit! Is everybody back? I can hear you. I see okay. you. No, my uh, the um, it went out for just a second. Oh, okay. Uh, so the uh, I'm working off a of Wi-Fi. It jumped. So I have like three different signals I can work off of. Uh, some are better than others, and for whatever reason, it just jumped from one to another one. Um, oh, so so yeah, cut so out for that split second. Yeah, you were frozen for a second, but then you came right back. So we're good. And then. Br OG bricks or OG brick 420. Gee, what's a brick of 420? Um, <laughs> you know what 420 is? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, oh, so old, old gangster brick for anyway. It's probably because the, the 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 time gap. It probably stayed at length. Anyway, so I want to do a side by side. So the C 917 is in my right hand, and the 
The, just old bottle. They didn't put cash numbers and so forth on the older bottles? No, no, it just has the proof on there. I don't think there's even an H statement on these. So they didn't they didn't give you all the, the specs or stuff like that like they do now? Nope, nope. There's 136 proof, 68% ABV. Got a little hang tag here. Um, yeah, I mean, not even. Uh, what is, any, is there any like tracking numbers or something like that? You know, if say if they had a bad bottle and they wanted to do research on it or something like that, I'm just kind of wondering. Yeah, I, I think they got the the stamp here at the bottom that has the code on it. Okay, I would so be. This one is. It would be interesting. It's connected to distillery. See, <coughs> send them an email. Hey, tell them you get this tracking number and see if they can give you any information on it. Yeah. It's. I think this one's from 2016, Eric. Okay. So I would say there's not like a major, huge, vast difference between these two. The the, the differences are so, more subtle. Yeah, it's on on the palate where it's really uh, right. A little little different. All right. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I. I some of them, like if, to, to me, some of the A batches of the newer ones are very sweet. Um, where some of the, the, I think it was the C batches, I'm not mistaken, are more that like dark molasses and, and, and like dark brown sugars. So I'm, I'm curious. So, I mean, even, man, so I got the, uh, the old bottle in my hand. Even the, so even back then, going a few years, that is so seductive. That is so balanced. The evolution on it from the front, the mid to the finish, it, it, it's you're getting something a little bit different. It has a real nice ride on it. Yes. Yeah. Um and it coats the it coats the palette really well, too. Yeah, it there's a up. there's a a glossy, I don't want to say oily, um, there's like a but a glossy silkiness that sort of coats your palette on it as well. A little, a little, little waxy, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's good it's stuff, man. Sweeter. It's a little sweeter than the other two. But even then, I mean, I mean, this like wow. This this yeah. stuff. Makes, so I wonder how much these so so Jason, he can get it for 50 bucks in Ohio. I wonder how much these went for originally. That's a good question. That was a very good question. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. So even, yes, it's, even, it's 50 even though, that's a good price. So even though there's batch variation, um, you know, between these, very, there's still something that's hard to uh, state as to what it, there's something that's still, it has a certain Elijah Craig barrel, ECB-ness about it. There's a certain yeah. Elijah Craig, there's a distinctive character to this that says, I am Elijah Craig bear proof. Yeah. Even for that, if you're familiar with Elijah Craig's bear proofs, then you have this one, you might not be able to know when it's from or what batch it is. But you go, it has a certain character to it, and it's hard to uh, describe it. That is a distinctive Elijah Craig Bear proof uh, character to it. And what really sort of, I think, sells it is the texture and the evolution of, of the flavors. I like, I don't, I don't, I don't want, whether it's wine or whiskeys, something to be exactly the same front, mid, and finish. I yeah. like the ride. Yeah, I like the ride. Yeah. Flavors. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I mean, consistency is nice, but I, I agree with you when you make that statement that you want you want those flavor variations going through, yeah, from the front to the end of the palate all the way to the finish. I, I completely agree. So, out of the three, this one's my favorite between the oh, three. Yeah. The other two yeah. are really, really unique, really, really interesting. In terms of the ooh, that's interesting. Uh, the the Russells what really stood out there is something very, very different. Uh, the other three. The lightest, of course, was the uh, Jim Beam 1976, but that Elijah Craig is classic. Now I'm like, I'm gonna drink some water for a while. I'm gonna and do more of a side by side with the C uh, C917. But let me respond to some right. comments. So Johnny Drum says the A119, which I've not had, was a cherry bomb. Yeah, I uh, I know a lot of people will say like the the A batches they find to be very sweet. Um, where uh, the, the B batches and the C batches, I guess, um, you know, going later into the year, 
um, tend to be a little more rich and, uh, and, and dense, a little heavier on the palate with some of those darker, those darker, uh, those characters that, that come out on the palate. Now I'm doing a C nine one seven. Yeah, I think Jason's favorite was the uh, is a C batch, if I'm not mistaken. I think a C nine one eight maybe is his favorite. If I'm not mistaken. It's it's a challenge. It, it takes practice to do to keep this one in your head. That there's flavors and aromas. Now taste it. <laughs> okay, now put that one in there. And now go <laughs> side by side, compare them to them, because I can go right back in here and taste this one again, but the flavor is so long and the finish is so long, uh, I'm still tasting this one. So now to go back and taste this one right away, it would be now would now be blending uh, the two yeah. in, in you know in my, my palate. Yeah, I mean, the, the score wise. Do you feel like do you feel like the um, the 136 proof the one I sent you comes off a little spicier maybe than the, uh, the than the other batch that you have? Well, the spiciest, the most rye. Hello, I'm rye. Yeah, uh, I thought was the Russells. I, I thought the Russells had particularly on the mid, right in the mid palate. I thought the Russells had much more of that intense rye character to it. Um, because everything else from the mash, it's, it's, let's say there's Three things in the mash. Um, I don't want to flip you off. Uh, <laughs> the, the other two components are a little bit more down. <laughs> it's, it's my ring finger. I'm not flipping you off. Um, the rye, in terms of all the characters of the mash, really stands out. Whereas with Elijah Craig, they're a little bit more even. Let's say there's four elements. There, um, but there's probably three. If they're a little bit more even. So there's an even expression of each element of the mash. Um, so even, but even if it had a higher rye co component, in terms of the way I'm perceiving it, um, all the components seem e equal, whereas a rye yeah. is just really jumping out at you. Yeah. And like I said, you know, that's that's something that's that's very different about that Beetlejuice pick was, um, like you said, those rye characteristics. It's, you know, not, you know, a lot of the other Russell's picks that I have, you don't get that. That rye pop that like they can do with that one, um, but you know there's some other ones that come off very sweet, um, very um, gum flavored like, or maybe um, very uh, nice summer fruit variations. Um, where that one, like I said, was just kind of the oddball when I when I first tried it. It was just so so rye forward and just those those rye characteristics. I never tasted a single barrel like that. So you think this is more, you would say, uh, unique for Russell's? That's not your typical Russell's? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes, without a doubt. Without a doubt. So I mean, if you were to... So you, so slightly change subject. So you you look like you're preparing for Christmas. You got your two wreaths in the background there. <laughs> That's my wife's decorations in the house. <laughs> whereas, whereas I have, I'm surrounded by my glory. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, that's what I'm hoping Never for one day. Day. And there's a lot more off camera. Um, so where are you at in terms of like, so I'm probably, I'm going to do a video by the end of the year, which I'll talk discuss my entire collection and actually certain elements I'm going to build out more over this next year because I, I need to spend, I want to spend more time with Canada um, and more time with, oh, and Irish. And those are two categories and rise. So Irish, yeah. Canada, and rice are three categories I need to spend more time with. Um, so do you have any particular, say, parameters of where you're going with your bourbon library? Or I like to call it a library. Uh, uh, rather than um, a I mean, I, I tend, like now, you know, I have a, 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 nice, a nice collection of, of dusty uh, uh, bourbons, whiskeys. That I do plan on reviewing um, on the channel here at some point. Some of them I like to, to plan on saving for a, a milestone when I whenever I get there. But um, I, I tend to I tend to gravitate more towards trying to find some of those. But but like I said, I mean I do have a, a, a decent collection of those right now. So maybe trying to um, go out and maybe try to grab some of these uh, like the the new Four Roses limited edition that just came out. I heard it was fantastic from several people. Maybe going out and try to find something, you know, along those lines, but always sticking to your basics, which I would call the basics is your 
Um, you know, I, I like the Michter Sour Mash. I like the uh, the Elijah Craig Small Batch and um, Evan Williams Hundred Proof Bottle and Bond. I mean, all your your basics and your core. Um, you know, just still trying to stay with those, but then still kind of venturing out on some of those um, harder to get bourbons. So geographically, where you? So I'm in I'm in the Silicon Valley in the south end of the uh, San Francisco Bay. Where are you at geographically? I am in right outside of Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, okay. So yeah, how very, how, how is like different states, different in Canada or whatever else, have challenges of obtaining certain things. Um, so how are you in terms of availability and stuff like that where you're at? Uh, avail there, there's one or two stores that I go to that um, I've made uh, friends with um, uh, the, the owner there. So every now and again, I, I'll be able to grab a, a bottle or two. But for the most part, to be honest, where I am, um, the selection is not great. So that's why I, I tend to kind of resort to the, the group of guys that I yeah. uh, that, that I'm friends with is to you know in, or, in order to obtain some of the bottles that I have in order to review them. So it's uh it does become difficult here in this area. I mean DC you can find some some yeah. nice stuff down in DC, but you know for me that's about a forty maybe forty minute drive roughly something like that. Dude, forty minutes nothing here. Just, no 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 that's not, you know, that's not, that's not the too traffic bad. sucks so bad. It, forty minutes is nothing here. Um, so like some states in terms of shipping and stuff like that are a pain in the ass or trying to buy online is a pain in the ass. Cal Texas, one of the problems with Texas is only about five distilleries right now are really distributing. Uh, and what they distribute outside of Texas is very rare. So I, as I said, in previous videos, if you're in Texas, even if you can't visit a distillery, go to a tech, go to a whiskey shop because you can get a lot of great stuff just out of a whiskey shop. I brought back home, you know, a, a ton of bottles. Um, so it, is where you're at, is it a challenge getting stuff in terms of online or whatever, or do you primarily lean on yeah. the community that you're part of? Yeah, some, there's some sites that I, I uh, if I try to find something, they don't ship here. Um, like there's been a couple of sites uh, from New York, um, some stores from New York, they, they won't ship here. New Hampshire won't ship here. Oh, um, so that does become difficult. There are very few that will, um, but those aren't the, stores where you can find that like the bottles i'm really looking for that's right. more like the, the basics it may not be around here but i can get um at, at that store so it does become out of kentucky or do you think or think the better stuff gets shipped out of kentucky is not consumed locally so it's not be able to available in kentucky or do you or would you think you'd be able to find better stuff in, actually in kentucky you know that's that's it's hard to say. Um, I, I think with uh, you know with talking with Brent, I, I know Brent from the uh, the Open Smoke Whiskey Reviews. Um, he lives, I believe, right on the border, um, right by um, Kentucky. Um, but uh, I think uh, every now and again he can grab uh, a nice bottle or two from from in Kentucky. But I, I personally think they uh, they send more out of the the more allocated right. uh, bourbons than they do than you can get actually inside Kentucky. So. So like I can get a I, I get Springbank you know Scotch whiskeys easier than people in Scotland that they because because most of it's being shipped out somewhere versus yeah locally so if you're in Scotland yeah, it's very you know, Springbank you actually get to ship from the U.S. yeah I mean you figure that you know being in Kentucky you have access to anything you want you know what I mean so that's where the, right. the majority is produced but that's that's not necessarily the case so these have all been fantastic and I like the fact that. Um, they are, this is not like the same thing, same thing. Really are very distinct, very unique. Yeah, I liked Elijah Craig more. And if I was doing this blind, I would say, yeah, I like this a lot more. And as I get to know Elijah Craig more, I would go, yeah, this is probably Elijah Craig. I would, no way in, no way in a million years, whatever, be able to identify these other two. Um, so I like it more, but yeah, I like the fact these are so unique and so distinctive. They're yeah. uh, enjoyable on their own. They're really, I don't want to very much for sending me uh, these. These are really, 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 really cool. Oh, it's not a problem, man. That's, uh, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad, you know, uh, thank you for, for having me on your channel. I've been wanting to be on your channel for, for a long time. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. So uh, next year, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm already pl got planned out things out to t April 2020. Uh, um, wow. I, yeah. It's just, I just, a lot of stuff going on. I am, ba I'm backed up in video and photography that I've already done. Uh, from my, from uh, traveling around, um, so I will probably next year do a bourbon month like I did this year. Uh, this year, um, so I'll bring you back on uh, during bourbon month because um, I like to bring awesome. on um, people who are like I had Scott from My Bourbon Journey, I had Jason on people, uh, I had uh, 
Kyle on from um, uh, Bourbon Blind. Yeah. 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 Bourbon. So I'll have you on again when I do my next Bourbon Month. I haven't figured out, uh, figured out when I'm going to do that okay. yet, but I'll definitely do yeah. another Bourbon Month next year. Um, so I'll definitely have you back on at least, if not sooner. Yeah. I'll have you back during that time. That's awesome, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So, hey, uh, anybody watching here, you guys probably all know uh, Dan, but if you haven't subscribed uh, already, um, you, you you type in already. So, hey, type it, make a comment right now on the, right now if you can. Can you make a comment? Yes. Just say hi. You can say anything. All right. Okay. So, if you don't watch right now, if you go to to where he said hello, stop. Everybody else, stop making comments. Now, if you go to the right, stop making comments. Now, everybody else, go. If you go to where he said hello, if you go over to the right with your cursor, you see the three dots. Now you click on those three dots, and you have a, a menu will drop down. It'll say go to channel, report, remove, or whatever else. Anyway, where it says go to channel, then you can hit go to channel. That'll bring up another met. That'll bring up another uh, window, and you'll see Dusty Dan's whiskey reviews. And then from there, you can subscribe. And then next to subscribe, there, there's a bell. You want to click that bell so you'll be notified when he posts another video or when he goes live on his channel. Appreciate that, Eric. Thank you. Yeah. yeah so uh, if, if you're ever watching somebody on, if you ever watch, if there's anybody, I never heard of that guy. Who was, let's say this guy named Whiskey Dork. I never heard of Whiskey Dork. I'm going to check out his channel <laughs> and they're in the chat. Just scroll over and go. Uh, and then that'll pop. So, and it doesn't interrupt uh, your watching of a live stream. Uh, you can just right click and then boom, bring up a new tab. There you go. So, nice. all righty. So, hey, so anyone who subscribed, uh, Lockna said he just subscribed. Thank you very much. And I'll thank you. For, thank you very much for uh, providing these whiskeys for uh, being my bartender or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> your mixologist. Uh, I really appreciate it. <laughs> so, you got anything coming up uh, in particular on your channel? Um, I do. So my next review is actually going to be uh, one of my Dusty reviews. Um, I, I won't say what it is right now, but uh, it is going to be a, a pretty nice bottle that I have. I actually haven't cracked it open yet, so it's going to uh, okay. um, it'll be something that I, I crack open um, on the camera. Um, and then from there, I'm looking to try to older bottle off the shelf that collects is collect the dust. I actually have I have a Caden Heads uh, Classic Highland Pure Malt, which is now an illegal term. And it literally, I'd say right now, if I had to take out the can, if I run my finger around the top of the can and go like this, oh, yeah, it's like <laughs> black dust on my finger. Yeah, this one is, uh, I believe this one's from 1946, if I'm not mistaken. I'll hold off on the name for right now until I, uh, until I, I wasn't uh, even born then, so that's really freaking dusty. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's wow. an older one that I have. Um, but I'm also looking to do um, so probably the top five um, budget bourbons. Oh, okay. That's uh, cool. Also, uh, eventually, here a top five uh, go-to bourbon video as well. Yeah. So, um, and then I have a, a couple other ones lined up. I'm actually going live with Brent um, tomorrow from the Open oh, okay. Smoke Whiskey Reviews. What so time? I'll be going, um, that's going to be nine p.m. If I'm not mistaken, Eastern Standard Time. Which is six o'clock my time, which is uh, uh, eight o'clock Central. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's at nine. It's either eight or nine. I'm pretty sure it's. And that's on your channel or on, on the Oak and Smoke? That's going to be on the Oak and Smoke. Okay. So on the so everyone tune in tomorrow, uh, nine Eastern. Pretty sure it's nine Eastern. Yeah. Uh, eight Central, six Pacific. Uh, so these two guys will be going uh, live again on there. So you want to you want to check that out uh, if you're not doing anything else. Um, you know what would be another good idea? So different channels have. Things they do that are a little bit different, that are a little bit different. Um, your Dusty Dan is there might be people who want to get into doing Dusties. If, if, other than the core group that you're a member of, do a video on how to find Dusties. Yeah, yeah it's how, a great idea. Just sort of great a great idea. And, and, and how to be a witness, which comes down to different ways of being a whiskey hunter or bourbon hunter. And yeah, finding yeah I agree. It's, it's a great idea, actually. I've never really right. actually thought about doing a video like that, but that's a, that's a great idea. So top five, top ten videos do really well, and how-to videos do really, really yes. well. Yes, great idea. Great idea. All right, so if, everybody, if, if, you, all have, if you haven't uh, given this video a thumbs up, please do. 
Uh, anybody watching, you haven't subscribed. I don't know how, how would you be watching if you're not subscribing, but the hell subscribe anyway. If you watch this on the replay, uh, give this a thumbs up. Um, what have I got coming up? So this weekend, my next installment of the Business of Scotch Whiskey, which we'll post, uh, which is on uh, environmental issues uh, regarding Scotch Whiskey. And then my the grand finale, which is on the future of Scotch Whiskey, should post early next week. In October, beginning October, I will start my series on, from my uh, visit to Scotland. So it should go all through October into December uh, will be my video series uh, of all the distilleries that I visited uh, in Scotland. So really looking forward to getting into those. It uh, should be a really, really good time. All right. So uh, hang in there, Dan. I want to thank, again, I hope everybody has a great weekend. I'm looking forward to cooler weather <laughs> as we oh, get yeah. this fall. And it's more, oh, yeah. of a, it's more of a whiskey mood in cooler weather. Hey, uh, Bourbon and Sand, thank you very much uh, for tuning in if you were watching earlier. Hey, I don't know Chris. if you're live tonight. Uh, but anyhow, so uh, ciao, everyone, and uh, cheers. Thank you all. Cheers.